1996 Buick Century with a 3100 engine with a PO300 random misfire trouble code. And I want to walk you through how to identify what type of misfire you're dealing with on this vehicle. Starting with the trouble code, PO300. Next place we're going to go is we're going to go to our data stream. And we're going to check our misfire data. This is a nice feature with GMs. And we're going to look at our history misfires and look at our current misfires. The car is not running right now. But you can see that cylinder number five has the most misfires with 16,000. We have some misfires showing on some of the other cylinders. One of the things you want to remember about a misfire counter on this, this type of vehicle is it monitors the crankshaft speed for misfire monitoring. And you can have a single cylinder misfire that can end up setting a PO300 and uh, basically give you misfire readings on other cylinders even though they're not misfiring. So our focus is going to be on the one with 16,000 misfires obviously and that's our number five cylinder. Go ahead and start the car and let's see what this looks like with it running. running these are current misfires these are history over here on this side so we want to focus on our current ones and you can see that the number five is showing a constant misfire the other cylinders are not showing anything right now um, see what it counts up to Two hundred. Okay. So the, the way that this functions, the way this works, or the way you interpret this data, is every two hundred cylinder firing events, cylinder number five is showing you the number of misfires for every two hundred cylinder firing events. Once it hits two hundred, it goes back to zero, and it counts two hundred over here. If you watch that process one more time, you'll see that happen. As soon as that hits two hundred, this is going to add two hundred to this side. Watch it. Okay, so just a little bit of misfire monitoring information. Let's say you only had 50 misfires in a 200 cylinder firing event. This would count to 50 and then drop back to zero. But the, the reason that it's counting all the way to 200, this is a constant misfire on the number five cylinder. We're not gonna worry about the random issue. We're gonna go right after the number five cylinder. Starting with secondary ignition. We're gonna look at our secondary ignition waveform next. Okay, in light of saving time for this video, I'm not gonna show all the procedures involved in setting up this secondary ignition adapter. Um, this is a waste spark system. There are three negative firing plugs, three positive firing plugs. This tool that I have connected has a negative and positive side. You need to make sure you coordinate these properly to have the tool read properly. Um, I'll shoot that in another video for now. We are connected to the ignition. It's a waste spark and we want to look at our screen, see what these waveforms look like. Okay, so we're looking at our, our ignition secondary waveforms. Uh, this is cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six. We want to focus right here on the number five. It's companion being the number two, but we want to focus on this guy right here. And we have a dead misfire. We can feel it, we can hear it. It's misfiring right now. You saw that on the misfire counters. Let's jump back there real quick so you can see that our misfire is still there. We are still counting on the number five. I don't see anything wrong secondary in that ignition waveform. One of the things you want to remember when you're doing ignition is you want to snap the throttle, take a look at it on a snap. We'll see if we can catch it there. Go back and take a look at that. Nice feature with the Varus is this recording buffer. That was on a snap throttle. And what you notice about this number five cylinder is an extremely high spark line. That is a red flag of a no fuel misfire when you see that. I've also seen a damaged spark plug do something similar, but that is a classic view of a no fuel misfire. Let's see if we can get it one more time. Watch it, number five. Watch the spark line on a snap. 
Go back, take a look on that snap. This is frozen data now. There it is again. You see that real high spark line? Number five cylinder. Some of the other ones were high at different times. You want to look at it a few different times. That number five is definitely an issue. We're going to go after the injector next. Okay, we're, we're going after the number five fuel injector due to our lean misfire on the scope. The intake manifold covers the number five injector, so we are connected to a bulkhead connector behind the alternator. And the black with a white tracer wire is our injector number five. That's where we're adapted to. We'll do two different injectors to show you what a good one and a bad one looks like. We're gonna look at the number five injector voltage waveform right now. Okay, just to show you my settings real quick, going to my lab scope, going to volts DC, that's just a single channel. And I'm gonna set my, my uh, screen to 100 volts, looking at a fuel injector. Injectors will spike over 100 volts. And you see that's actually going off the screen. I'm not so much worried about the spike in this particular demo. What we're looking for is injector control. And what we know right now by this waveform is the computer is in fact turning this injector on and off. This is your battery voltage when the injector is off. Uh, this is the switch of the transistor where it turns on. Your pulse width would be from here to here. And the spike is a collapse of a magnetic field. What we're looking for in this waveform is what's known as a pencil hump, and it's missing at the end of this waveform. And what that tells you is there is no mechanical movement of this fuel injector. It is actually stuck closed. So you want to focus right here. I'm going to drop the voltage down a little bit so we can see that a little bit better. And there's a 50 volt. And again, we're looking for in here, ignore this. That's just interference. We're looking for a pencil hump right here. It is not there. We're gonna to go to a known good injector to show you the difference. I'm just gonna move the T-pin. Take a look at that area. There is a known good fuel injector. What you're looking at is right here. There's your pencil hump. You notice it's there on this injector and it wasn't there in the last one. I'm gonna go back to the other one, take a look at it real close. Again, we're looking right here in this section, right there on this waveform, a little blip in the screen tells you that there's mechanical movement of that injector. I'm gonna go back to the number five. Take a look at the number five. You'll see a good injector waveform, but what do you notice is missing? There is no pencil hump in that waveform. This fuel injector is stuck closed. That's why we have a high spark line in our secondary waveform. That's why we have a misfire on this car. Cylinder number five, fuel injector <laughs> is stuck closed. All right, so we're still in the number five injector. What I'm gonna try to show, I don't know if this is gonna work. Sometimes, sometimes it will, but I'm gonna try to unstick this fuel injector we're just gonna smack on the body of the fuel injector, try to unstick it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna work back here. I'm gonna take a screwdriver at the, um, at the injector and I'm just gonna smack on it basically with this screwdriver. I'll keep you focused on the scope while we're doing it. You'll know when I unstick it because the second I unstick this fuel injector, that pencil hump's gonna return. So watch it. get to it. There, there it is. You, go. you got it. So oh. I just... Nice. That's it. I just mechanically unstuck that fuel injector. Our misfire is now gone. Go back to the scan tool. I'll show you that. And if you look at our misfire counters, You'll notice that my misfire is gone on my number five cylinder. And you see the RPM is moving, so we are running. Engine's idling. Misfire is gone on the number five. Stuck, closed, fuel injector.
you got two choices. You're either going to replace that number five injector or we're going to try some BG44K in the tank. I've seen that work before. I've heard other techs report that the Chevron Tecron works pretty good. Uh, we can try one of those two. And um, obviously we need this injector to be firing when you're running this cleaner through. Um, you might have to replace it, but there you go. Number five injector, stuck closed, identified by a secondary ignition waveform, identified by an injector voltage waveform showing you a stuck closed fuel injector. There's two other things you can use to identify a stuck closed fuel injector. One can be a current probe measurement of that fuel injector and you'll actually see a pencil hump on the ramp of a current pattern. And, and one more can actually be tailpipe emissions. I mentioned this in my book that if you put a tailpipe uh, emission analyzer in and you measure your hydrocarbons from the tailpipe, a stuck closed fuel injector will have normal hydrocarbon readings as opposed to an ignition or compression misfire that would have very high hydrocarbon readings. So we could have done that as well. Um, again, secondary ignition, injector voltage, injector current, tailpipe emissions, all of those will identify a stuck closed fuel injector. That's it, 96, 3100 GM, Maltec 2, stuck closed fuel injector.